Melo. Yes. How are you? Good morning, President. Uh, good morning, Press Bert Strada. Uh, we're also we're now live uh, on Facebook and on Melo Acuna Reports. So we will begin our discussions, and uh, we will be introducing our guests in just a very short while. Alam po niyo magandang pag-usapan kung ano ba ang nagaganap sa West Philippine Sea. At magandang pag-usapan nito sapagkat ang ating mga panauhin ay mga taga Zambales. Alam po ninyo, pag sinabing Zambales, malapit yan sa Scarborough Shoal. Ano ba kalagayan ng mga taga roon? Ano ba ang pananaw ng mga abogado sa mga issue na bumabalot sa ating suberenya? At uh, ayon sa current history, meron mga abogado na nagtungo sa Court Suprema upang ipagtanong kung ano ba ang maaring gawin sa nagaganap sa kanilang nasasakupan. So, uh, we took time out to invite lawyers from uh, Zambales to sit with us and they are from the uh, Integrated Bar of the Philippines. Maganda pong pag-usapan ito sapagkat uh, sila ang nakaalam ng batas. Nabanggit din ng Pangulong Duterte na it's just a scrap of paper pero sa mga naunang forum ay bilanggit ng mga resource persons na hindi naman ito Ganun na lamang. So we're joined by Attorney Winston Hines. Siya po ang current president ng Integrated Bar of the Philippines Zambales. Tapos makakasama rin natin si Attorney Maria Soledad Santos, past president ng Zambales IBP. At ganun din po naman si Attorney Josefina Bueno. Siya po ay past president rin ng Integrated Bar of the Philippines. We're expecting Attorney Manuel Rosa Papan to be with us too and Attorney Deo Contreras. But I, I was told na narito rin yung kanilang incoming president. And probably Attorney Winston Hines would uh, tell us more about the incoming president and the IBP in Zambales. What have you been doing lately? Magandang umaga po. Magandang umaga, Melo. And uh, sa atin pong lahat ng mga nanonood at nakikinig, uh, magandang umaga po. I would like also to greet my colleagues in IBP Zambales, our former presidents, Attorney Bebot uh, Santos yes. and Attorney Jose Fueno Bueno. I could also see Attorney Praise Ladringan as uh, being present. And most especially, I informed him and he was uh, gracious enough to be with us uh, at our uh, incoming national uh, IBP president on July 1. He will formally uh, assume his uh, office. Welcome and thank you very much, Attorney Bert Strada. Okay, all right. Uh, mabuti naman at narito kayo. Uh, meron tayong uh, gustong malaman, may gusto kong malaman. Uh, how active is the Integrated Bar of the Philippines? Anong legacy yung iiwanan mo, Attorney Winston? Uh, we are uh, very active, sir, so far as... Uh, West Philippine Sea is uh, concerned. Uh, in fact, uh, during our IBP regional convention last Friday, the IBP Central Luzon and uh, IB, uh, last sat Saturday, I mean, IBP uh, 18th National Convention of Lawyers, IBP Sambales was cited with a special award for uh, filing in behalf of Filipino fishermen um, the petition for a writ of Kalikasan. That was started during the time of uh, President Bueno and it was filed during the time of President Hanna de Villa. And uh, we will continue the uh, fight as uh, our incoming president had assured us, had assured us that the IBP is behind uh, IBP Sambales and all lawyers uh, for the protection of our national integrity. I see. Pero siguro, just to start the ball rolling, I, I will have to ask you uh, a very basic question. Uh, this goes to you and to all the lawyers aboard. Pag sinabi bang uh, Philippine territory, uh, how is it defined in the Philippine Constitution? Uh, well, sir, mayroon pong uh, exact definition ng ating national territory. And, uh, but also the national territory had uh, been expanded also to include yung ating exclusive economic zone. No? There is uh, uh, international treaty about that. We have passed a law 
uh, defining our exclusive uh, economic zone. At yung mga pinag-uusapan po natin on West Philippine Sea, they either fall under our uh, in our national territory or within our ex exclusive economic zone. Maybe mm -hmm. our former President Bueno can uh, expand more uh, or regarding these uh, issues. Yes, Madam. Uh, welcome aboard and uh, join the discussions. Yes. Attorney Bueno? Attorney Bueno, yes. Yes, good morning po. Good morning. Uh, sorry po, mahina. Ano na nga po ulit yung question po ninyo? <laughs> okay, well, it's the internet all over again. Para pag nagbabasa tayo o nanonood tayo, uh, meron mga nobela, sabi, it's the butler who did it. Uh, what does the Constitution say about our territory? Maganda rin pag-usapan yung exclusive economic zone at uh, marami pang iba. Yes, please. Attorney Bueno. Ako, mas magaling po siguro na yung bar top nature po ang sasagot dyan kung ano yung Philippine territory. I understand he also teaches constitutional law. Di ba? Mas maganda po na siya yung mag-discuss na yan kasi siya yung mas magaling sa ganyan eh. Ang kaya namin i-discuss later on kung ano po yung ginawa namin. Well, sure. Ipapasa ko po sa kanya ulit para siya yung mas authoritative na mag-discuss. Kanino po natin ipapasa ito? Ayan, kay Attorney Winston po. Siya ang ating constitutionalist eh. Ang ating oh, birth of nature. Ayun pa lang naman eh. Siya, siya, okay. Siya yun, kaya-kaya niya yan. Ang kaya namin i-discuss po kung ano na po yung ginawa ng IBP Zambales. Yes. Oh, <laughs> Attorney Winston. <laughs> oh yes sir. Um, nasa, nan, actually po nasa article 1 yan ng ating uh, constitution. What constitutes uh, our... Uh, national uh, territory. So within that definition, um, we have uh, the right to uh, protect, we have the right to make use and enjoy our uh, national territory and to exclude all others. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, okay. Archipelago, like us, uh, it was recognized that uh, we have exclusive economic zone beyond our shores, which are not actually part of our national territory anymore, but uh, we are given the yun nga pong tinatawag na exclusive right to enjoy, right to uh, uh, protect them for the use and enjoyment of our Filipino fishermen. But uh, it doesn't mean na we can na, na hindi po pwedeng pumasok ang ibang mga bansa. They can under uh, uh, safety pag kinakailangan po pag may mga sakuna sa mga dagat. But they cannot uh, just like what the Chinese are doing to exclude us or our fishermen from enjoying it. So that's the uh, broad definition of our national territory as uh, in relation to our exclusive economic zone. I see. Uh, Attorney Maria Soledad Santos, your thoughts? Yes, please. sir. Yes. May we have your thoughts about the issue? Pag sinabing uh, ito yung ating nasasakupan, ito yung ating teritoryo, uh, yung exclusive economic zone, is it the 200-mile exclusive economic zone? Ito ba yung 12 nautical miles? Ano po ba ang nasasabi dito? 200 miles, sir, from the landmass. Kung ano po yung last na landmass ng teritoryo ng Pilipinas, doon po mag extend yung 200 miles po, sir. Mm -hmm. Pero you will agree with me na merong overlaps, lalo na sa katimugang bahagi ng Pilipinas, doon sa Indonesia, sa Malaysia, and probably Brunei. So how do we deal with such a condition? Uh... Siguro po sir, si Attorney Winston ang makakasagot dyan kasi international law professor siya. Pero ang alam ko po, pag dun sa mga common area po na yun, we have also common, parang common grounds po natin yun eh. Parang uh, kumbaga sa, sa isang teritoryo, co-owner po lahat siguro yung mga tao na nando, yung mga countries na nakakasakop po doon. So we cannot say that we have the exclusive right over that zone which is also covered by the other countries. Yung po ang aking tingin. Doon. Okay. 
Alam niyo, bata pa ako, nasa kolehiyo pa ako, narinig ko na si Catherine Tolentino, pinag-uusapan na yan, unclosed na yan, at iba pa. Pero, Attorney Winston, uh, yung 200 miles exclusive economic zone, sabi nga ni Attorney uh, Santos, eh nagmumula doon sa landmass. So, ano yan? Uh, from Zambales o from our territory na may isla doon sa west of Zambales? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, definitely po, we have to determine kung uh, saan yung ating mga isla na let's say uh, maybe ma, uh, mas uh, clear pang uh, example in terms of Palawan kasi Sambales is uh, as a shore at wala po kami mga ibang may mga isla pero maliliit but Palawan is a better example where uh, where do we count yung uh, 200 economic uh, zone yung miles from the land mass territory So from the farthest point of Palawan, uh, that will be uh, where the 200-mile economic zone will be measured. So doon po pa rin sa landmass niya, uh, na, nandoon yung uh, ating economic zone. Kasi in, in our national territory, ang nakalagay po ron, the waters around between and connecting the islands of the archipelago still form part of the internal wa internal waters of the Philippines. So as long as they are within the internal waters, uh, they are still within our territory. But beyond that, the, the 200 mile will be counted. Mm -hmm. I remember asking uh, then President uh, Noynoy Aquino in one of the events he attended for the Foreign Correspondents Association of the Philippines uh, about the Benham Rice. So how would we consider the Benham Rice? Because there is no landmass in the Benham Rice. It's just uh, part of our sovereignty. Uh, I remember he referred me to uh, DNR Secretary Ramon Pahe. What's your take on our sovereignty over and above the Benham Rice? Well, I, I think from what uh, I've read, the Benham Rice is within our territory. Uh, it's not even uh, within our exclusive economic zone. So it's really ours. Hindi po siya, there's no question about it that it's within the national territory as far as uh, what I've read so far. Okay, so how do we measure it? How do we measure our territory? Because uh, merong ginawang decree si Pangulong Marcos noon. Uh, nabago po ba yung ating nasasakupan with that Marcos decree during the martial law years? Well, de definitely po may, uh, meron pa rin uh, melo na mga... Uh, what do you call this, some ambiguities. Because in our constitution, we haven't uh, actually surrendered our uh, claim of what we call yung, uh, which we have uh, territories that uh, we have uh, yung claim natin, like in Sabah. No? Even the national territory provision of our constitution was vague in so far as uh, claiming uh, what is ours but in so far as the presidential decree is concerned yun nga pong sinasabing uh, 12 nautical miles in which we still have uh, uh, jurisdiction so we were taught in constitutional law that uh, we will draw imaginary line uh, from uh, end to end of our islands and uh, between Uh, yung waters inside those imaginary lines from the farthest tip of our islands will be called international waters and will form part of our national territory. So from that uh, imaginary line, we draw the, uh, the exclusive economic zone of 200 miles. Mm, okay. Well, I was told uh, Attorney Hannah de Villa cannot make it today because she just had her vaccine yesterday. And yeah. she's not feeling well. Uh, we have Attorney Deo Contreras with us. Deo, good morning and welcome. Welcome aboard. Oh. Natrafika. <laughs> Natrafiko. Good morning. Natrafiko ako. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, Napapag-usapan na itong uh, ating nasasakupan, itong ating teritoryo. Napag-usapan kung paano ito nasusukat. Pero ang isang tanong dito ay, mahalaga ba yung arbitral ruling noong 2016? I'd like to pose the question to all the lawyers to all our guests and probably the incoming president can also share attorney uh, Bert Strada his thoughts how important is the ruling given by uh, the arbitral tribunal in uh, 2016 i remember it's uh, july 12 2016 uh, 
uh, it's memorable for me because uh, just 12 hours after the release of the decision, I oh. had uh, Richard Haydarian, uh, former Senator Leticia Ramos Shahani, uh, Dr. Eileen uh, San Pablo Baviera of UP Asian Center, uh, Attorney Jay Batong Bacal of uh, UP Maritime Institute or Studies, and of course, uh, si Richard Haydarian, uh, isang uh, columnista at political uh, analyst. How important is this ruling to us, Filipinos? Uh, uh, Dayo, simulan mo muna. Uh, according to age muna. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's my penalty for coming in late. Yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. Alam nyo, any student, karamihan naman ang lawyers natin, pati ikaw, you're a policy major. Ano? Political science, eh, sa international law, kinukuha na natin yan sa policy, especially sa College of Law, Uh, law in international, international law, eh, Section 2 ng ating Article 2 ng Constitution, in essence, sinasabi ho doon sa Section 2, number 1, na uh, the Philippines renounce, it renounces war as a national policy. Walang gera as national policy. I'm leading to the declaration of the President kasi. Number 2, yun ang ano, yun ang mga ang international law is considered also as part of the law of the land of the Philippines. So yan ho yung basic uh, uh, origin ng why we are reacting as Filipinos based on that constitutional provision which is the basic fundamental law of our land. Nobody can amend that, even uh, the executive or Congress, unless there is a constitutional change. Mm -hmm. So it binds us. Oh yes. We, we, we are part of the signatories sa United Nations. Kaya... Hindi mo naman natin pwedeng pag gano'n na lang. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Attorney Santos, your views please. How important is the ruling to us? It's very important. Kasi po, nire-recognize po ng lahat ng countries ang ruling na yan. Eh. So yung pong exclusive economic zone na yon, nagpapalakas po ng loob natin as a citizen. Lahat po yan, pag po sinabi natin uh, ruling, lalo na yan, the hate convention po ang nag-rule nag dyan, di po ba? So, hindi lamang po Pilipinas o ang Pilipino ang, ang nagre-recognize niyan, kundi pati po rin ang ibang country, nire-recognize din po nila ang stand o ang sovereignty ng Filipino over that area. So, in that instance, if China will continue to intrude into that territory, other persons will take notice on that. I mean, other countries will take notice on that. Not just us Filipinos. So it is that important to us, sir. Okay. Uh, but I recall China did not participate. Although they came up with position papers in the media and statements of their Minister of Foreign Affairs. Will that be all right if they did not participate? They did not participate. They did not participate in the uh, arbitration because they so even didn't. sir, even sir, if they did not participate, they are bound by it. Your, they are bound by it, sir. Mm. If they did not participate, they are considered as if as they were in default because they did not participate in it. But uh, all the countries recognize it, sir. Uh, okay. Yeah. Hello. Uh, uh, just yeah, to, to support the statement of Attorney Santos. Attorney Bueno. Sorry. Sorry. Tony Jose. Uh, the thing here is uh, ang, ang China ho, pumirma yan kasama natin doon sa UNCLOS, yung United Nations Convention of Law of the Seas, nakapirma sila. Since they are bound by that, how can they now deny the jurisdiction ng Philippine Court of uh, Permanent Court of Arbitration na party niyan eh. So mukha hong may conflict, may conflict sila na kanilang position. Mm, okay. Uh, Attorney Bueno? Yes po. Ano po uh, ang inyong masasabi? The, there was a definitive ruling that the Union showed and Panganiban Reef are part of our national, are part of our exclusive economic zone. As such, tayo lang po dapat ang pwedeng mag-explore ng resources na nandoon natin. Tayo lang dapat ang mag-manage. Dahil meron pong ganong ruling or ang arbitral tribunal, dapat lang po na pangalagaan natin na ipaglaban natin. Diba? I-enforce na lang natin yan. Nasa atin na po eh. Nasa atin na. Wala na tayong ibang gagawin. Nirecognize na tayo. Nirecognize na tayo internationally. Bakit pa natin ipamimigay yung karapatan natin? Bakit hindi natin gagawin yung obligasyon natin na pangalagaan kung ano po yung nasa atin na? Bakit okay. pababayaan pa natin? Okay. Uh, good point. Ano At lang naman po. Uh, 
Uh, yes, uh, Melo. Actually, to me, the importance ng ating arbitral tribunal, I uh, it demolished totally the uh, legal basis uh, allegedly of China, the so-called nine dust line. No, with uh, the pronouncement of the permanent arbitral tribunal, na walang basihan, na walang uh, legal basis ang kanilang claim na nanday nine dust line. Therefore, ay wala silang karapatan na magangkin ng buong uh, uh, West Philippine Sea or South China Sea. Dahil po dito, uh, ang ating mga kaibigang mga bansa are now enforcing the tribunal by uh, making uh, uh, safe navigation like the navies of uh, Japan, United States, Great Britain, Australia, France, and other uh, great navies of the world are uh, recognizing and enforcing the decision. Yun po ang importante na wala po ng uh, basihan ang China sa kanilang claim na pag-angkin ng halos lahat ng karagatan uh, ng uh, West Philippine Sea or South China. Yeah. Uh, but uh, Attorney Winston, I also heard someone say, how can the U.S. be part of it when it's not even a signatory to the UNCLOS? Uh, yan naman po ay uh, palagay ko ang uh, ginagawa na naman ng Amerika uh, at ng iba pang mga countries, even if they are not signatory, is uh, to enforce uh, an international uh, award. No? Uh, hindi naman po kailangan silang maging signatory para kilalanin nila ang isang uh, arbitral award. And uh, of course, uh, practically speaking, uh, they are enforcing it because they have the means and capability to do it. Mm, okay. Uh, I'd like to listen to the thoughts of the incoming IBP Zambales President, uh, Bert Strada. Uh, Attorney Strada? Na National President, sir. Not only Zambales. Oh. Uh, He's coming president, national president. Uh, I'm sorry, I stand corrected, uh, Mr. President. Sure. Yeah. Your thoughts sorry, about uh... yeah. Your your thoughts about the importance of the arbitral ruling in favor of the Philippines. Uh, yes, sir. Um, the IBP last May, sir, May uh, 24, I think, on the 24th board, has actually. Uh, submitted and uh, published a unanimous resolution calling on all uh, branches of government to protect our uh, territorial sea and our EEZ and also insist on the uh, uh, implementation of the arbitral ruling and not just treat it as a mere scrap of paper. It is very important, sir, because under our constitution, the state is supposed to protect uh, what is ours for our future generations. And we all know that these uh, areas uh, are uh, the riches in those areas are supposed to be exclusively reserved for the use of our people and uh, our future generations. If we lose this, we already won the legal battle. But if we are complacent and uh, we are not able to uh, to uh, enjoy the fruits of those uh, legal uh, victory, then we will have been remiss in protecting what is for our people and that of our future generations, sir. So mm -hmm. that's why I am very thankful that I've been invited here by Attorney Winston Ines. In fact, uh, Attorney Raj Palacios, one of the uh, lawyers also uh, represented us in the uh, Supreme Court in the Rit of Kalikasan is supposed to be with me today to meet and to uh, personally uh, update me on this matter also. I was hoping he could be here earlier so he can also join this uh, online meeting. But uh, we give uh, utmost priority to this, uh, sir, no? because uh, the 24th board has already issued that uh, resolution. The incoming board will be also uh, giving this utmost priority, sir. Yeah, Attorney Bert, uh, if we are to take a look back, they say hindsight gives us a perfect vision. Okay, When you look back, you have a perfect vision of what could have been, what should have been done. 
But what could have been the reason for the lukewarm, should I say, acceptance or lukewarm uh, reception of the executive in 2016 of this ruling? I honestly cannot, uh, uh, I cannot imagine or nor can I speculate on their reason, sir. But I can only say that, uh, yes, uh, in hindsight, uh, there's something really missing and uh, very unfortunate that uh, having that uh, legal victory that uh, our government was not able to, to uh, uh, implement or execute it or uh, um, really take it to the international community and uh, make known that legal victory. Um, there may be many, many, uh, we can only speculate and uh, uh, imagine what those reasons are, but uh, what we can say that the IBP has always been consistent on uh, uh, insisting on the rule of law, on the rule of international law. And since that is a legal uh, arbitral award, that uh, it should be respected. And mm -hmm. we will continue to do so. And we hope that uh, the people, the Philippines also uh, sees that uh, we, need, uh, we need to call on our government to insist on this uh, legal victory. And uh, we have to take them to account why they are not uh, um, citing this or uh, why they are lukewarm, as he say. No? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, because I, I do recall uh, then uh, Foreign Affairs Secretary Jun Yasai, may he rest in peace, he was criticized why uh, he didn't jump and shout of the victory uh, when he declared the short statement uh, at 5 o'clock in the afternoon of uh, July 12. And he just said, well, we won. But it was not as uh, just like Ateneo winning over Lasal in the UAAP. Hindi ganun eh. I iba yung arrive. So sabi nila. Uh, but of course, there will be reasons. No? There will be always be reasons. Now, if we take a, a look back, uh, what happened? Ano ang nangyari doon sa activities ng IBP at nag-file ng kaso sa Korte Suprema? Yan. Maganda siguro pag-usapan natin yan. Sino kaya ang magbo-volunteer sa ating mga abogadong panauhin? Yes, please. Si Attorney Breno po ang ano niya, makakasagot niyan kasi siya umulis na yung time na yun. Sige po. Go ahead. Tell us, ano ba talaga nangyari? The, um, during our time, and it was continued during the time of Attorney Hana, the IBP filed a petition for the issuance of writ of kalikasan and the writ of continuing mandamus. Our purpose, at least the IBP's purpose, was to have the decision implemented, diba? as being discussed by President Burt. Um, we were informed of such plans and we were tasked since to look for possible petitioners since we are the ones directly affected. And there were meetings, there were several meetings, and we it was Attorney Santos who um who really helped us in finding the in finding the petitioners because she had clients who had been coming to her and if she may be allowed to continue the cuento, and then we will just exchange, uh, we will just uh, supplement each other's stories or Account. accounts of yes. how it uh, it went on. Attorney Santos, please. Yes, opo. Meron po kasi ako mga kliyente na taga isla po ng barangay kinabuksan. Yung pong barangay kinabuksan, katabi lang po yun ng Hanjin, sa Kawag po, sa Subic Sambales. Sila po ay mga mangingisda. Marami po silang ang isang isang isla po yon na mangingisda po ang mga tao. So tinawagan ko po sila at tinanong ko kung gusto po ba nilang um, uh, makausap ang IDP kasi po ang IDP ay handahan tumulong sa kanila tungkol po sa mga nagiging problema nila sa kanilang pangingisda lalo na po dito sa West Philippine Sea. So tinawagan ko po sila um, ang pangalan po Siguro I did not mention their names anymore. No? So tinawagan ko po yung mga clients ko at sumugod naman po sila. Malaking pamilya po sila. Eh. So pumunta naman po sila sa IDP at inaccommodate po naman nila Attorney Dueno. Tapos doon po na nagsimula ang istorya. 
nung na-endorse ko na po sila kay Attorney Duelo. Mm. At ano po ang kanilang kwento? De, kasama po sa mga kwento nila uh, na habang nangingisda po sila sa West Philippine Sea, diba, meron pong mga malalaking barko po na, tumat- na pumupunta sa gilid nila at itinataboy po sila. At common po ay yung kwento ngayon, hindi lang po sa mga mangingisda ng Zambales, kundi sa lahat po ng nangingisda sa area ng West Philippine Sea. Kasi ano lang naman po yung bangka natin, di ba? Yung bangka natin, siguro kayang duma- uh, maglayag, magfish for three, at most three days na dala nila lahat ng baon nila, dala nila lahat ng yelo, may dalang bigas doon na maghasaing, doon na magtutulog, they would take turns sleeping. Pero yun nga po, Uh, ang common po na kwento nila ay yung pagtaboy po sa kanila ng mas malalaki, ng mas malalaking barko, hindi lang po ng bangka. At syempre po, ano ang laban natin? Diba? Mga simpleng mangingisda lang po tayo talaga. Eh. At most, mm-hmm. ilan lang po ang laman ng bangka. Yun po yung mga kwento na alam ko na isinusumbong po nila kay Attorney Santos. Kaya po si Attorney Santos talaga, dahil mga clients niya po, mga mga islanders po ito ay mga islanders po kami. Hindi naman kami yung may mga malalaking barko. Mm-hmm. Na sinusumbong nila, sinasabi po nila kay Attorney Santos kaya eto na yung chance natin, 'di ba, mga kapwa namin mangingisda, mga kababayan namin na baka pwede naman po tayong magkatulungan. Kami yung IBP, we have the means, we have the, the legal knowledge, ang kailangan lang namin yung mga kwento nyo, 'di ba, Attorney Bebot? Yes mm-hmm. po, totoo po 'yan. Ba, anong petsa po ito? Do you recall uh, the date? 2015, right? Time mo. Uh, mahabang proseso po yung pinagdaanan namin eh kasi yung IBP, yung IBP po at that time, 'di ba? Yun po talaga yung tour. Nagsimula pa lang po kami nung nasa Palawan o sinusuportahan na po namin. Simula pa lang po dahil 'di ba palagi kaming merong seminars na ito yung West Philippine Sea, ito yung ruling ng Arbitral Tribunal, ito si Justice Carpio na nagsasalita sa lahat ng forum ng IBP na di ba masyado ma, very very passionate and aside from him there were all others di ba at uh, hindi ko na mo sinasabing pinick up ng IBP kasi tungkulin naman po talaga namin as lawyers di ba na maglingkod po na i-extend po ako ano po ang kaya namin gawin ko ano ang meron kami maswerte po kami na andiyan po yung IBP National kung kami lang kasi sa Zambales hindi naman po namin kaya kasi ang lalaki po ng mga kakalabanin namin, di ba? Yung mga ahensya po na dapat mag-enforce, nakakatakot po lahat. Mga malalaki, sino lang kami? Eh, hello, Attorney Raj. Uh, I hello. already saw Attorney Raj. Okay. Yeah, we were with Attorney Raj all the way and all the other friends from the IBP. Di ba? Okay. We were ably assisted by everyone from IBP Zambales. Di ba? Meeting-meeting po, nasa office namin sila na ito, mga kuya, mga sir, mga manong, ito po yung, di ba, sinasabi niyo po sa amin, ito yung mga problema nyo. Ito po yung pwede namin gawin. Ito yung petition na pwede namin gawin. Ano yung gusto nyo? Maraming marami pong usap hanggang isinama po sila sa Manila, isinama po sa IBP National Office, nakipag-meet po with the national officers para po alam po nila kung ano po yung pinapasok nila. Mm-hmm. Okay. Ayan po, kaya po nakapag-file tayo ng petition. Okay. Probably, Attorney, 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 yeah. Si Attorney Strada can share with us. Dumating na yung kasama nating abogado. Attorney uh, Strada, please. Pakilala natin yung kasama ninyo. Yes, sir. So, together with me, uh, yes, Attorney please. Raj Palacios, and as mentioned by Attorney Pino, he was one of our uh, uh, legal counsel who represented the uh, IBP and the other petitioners before the Supreme Court. And he's actually here, sir, because uh, we have already planned this meeting uh, weeks ago, and he's here to update me on uh, the issues uh, concerning the West Philippine Sea and other issues concerning our uh, ILIAC, or International Legal Aid uh, Program of the IBP. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's very timely that uh, you're having this uh, roundtable discussion. Uh, I think Attorney Raj is one of the uh, uh, foremost experts in uh, what happened there. And yeah. that's what part of... Uh, As I mentioned, uh, we are putting uh, this as uh, one of our priorities. That's why before even we sit down tomorrow, assume our post, uh, we want to be updated. And so that we can uh, take also uh, 
actions, necessary actions uh, uh, as we assume our post as a 25th yeah. board. So yeah. you can ask Attorney Raj anything, sir, on, uh, on that. Uh, yes, please. On this uh, issue. Yeah. Thank you, Attorney Strada. Yes, Attorney Raj Palacios, please. Ano po ang account yes, ninyo doon uh, sa nangyari? Sir, thank you po for uh, allowing me to join your meeting. <laughs> uh, <laughs> congratulations dun sa mga newly elected uh, officers po ng uh, IBP Zambales chapter. Si Press mm -hmm. uh, Winston, newly elected. No? Uh, as a uh, as, uh, stated by uh, uh, IBP, former IBP Press uh, Suping, we work closely, ho. we work closely with uh, IBP Zambales. So ako naman po, I'm with the committee, the national committee ng IBP on international law. So we've been existing since 2017. And one of the key issues that uh, was assigned to us was the West Philippine Sea. Aside from, of course, yung ICC, yung human rights, yung Pamigipit sa abogado. So, uh, among other issues, yung West Philippine Sea po was one of the issues assigned to our committee. Okay. So, we were thinking of uh, ways to enforce the arbitral award. So, one way to enforce the arbitral award under Philippine law uh, was to uh, get a court decision that would... Uh, make reference to the court. So if we nationals who are committing the violations of Philippine law, well, it may be hard to acquire uh, jurisdiction over their person. Uh, mm -hmm. So one way to get a uh, you know large group to go with us in IBP was to uh, frame it as an environmental issue. And indeed, there were really a lot of uh, violations of Philippine environmental laws, and uh, mm -hmm. which had a very, uh, very big impact, a negative impact on 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 the livelihoods of fishermen. Okay. Uh, so that's what we did. We we created a theory for the case, uh, but before that, we had high level meetings with Bifar, as we were mm -hmm. preparing the theory of the case over several months. No, we have. Uh, construct the theory for the case over several months. So we had high-level meetings with BIFAR. Uh, and so we tried to get their sense as to how they perceive their role under the fisheries code. Because under the fisheries code, uh, environment, there are environmental provisions in the fisheries code which have to be enforced all over in all Philippine waters, including the exclusive economic zone. And BIFAR is okay. the agency primarily to enforce the fisheries code, including its environment, environmental provisions. Uh, and so we got the sense from them that they, you know, they they were aware of their statutory mandate, and uh, they only had limitations. They only had limitations in terms of uh, resources. They didn't have enough boats. They didn't have enough manpower. So when we were talking to Bifar, we were packaging it to them as actually, if we file a case, it may actually be good for you. It may be good for you because then you can, you know, if you have a court decision mandating, directing you to enforce the fishery code as required by statute in all Philippine waters, including the West Philippine Sea, then you can go to Congress and ask for more bu budget. Of course. The same of way course. that DNR is able to ask for more budget in MMDA because of the Manila Bay ruling to clean up Manila Bay. Right? Yeah, so, and, pero hindi ko kung kasama sa ruling yung paglalagay ng Dolomite. Ano? Hindi kasama yun. That's another issue. Right? Oh, wala talaga yun. Palacios? <laughs> nag freeze yata yung kanilang yung kanilang uh, internet pero ba't ko ba nabanggit yung dolomite yan yeah, nawala tuloy <laughs> okay so nagkaroon ng pakikipag-usap sa BIFAR and they had the sense na meron silang papel kaya nga lamang kulang yung kanilang resources tama po ba yung pagkakaunawa ko attorney Santos and attorney Bueno Ganun nga po ba yun na sinabi ng BIFAR na kulang sila sa resources? Attorney Ben? Yeah. <laughs> Nabanggit kasi ni Attorney Palacios na nag-usap, sa nakipag-usap sa BIFAR and then nabanggit na okay, may reservations lang kami dahil kulang yung aming kakayahan. 
Although sinabi ni Atty. Palacios, mas makabubuti kung magkaroon ng ruling because you can go to Congress and get more assets, right? And DNR had uh, their own field day for their own Manila Bay cleanup. Uh, am I right in uh, understanding what the good lawyer said? Uh, attorney uh, Santos, Attorney Bueno? I think Attorney Bueno knows that. Uh, siya po yung nakatalong doon. Okay. Yes, Attorney Bueno. Um, we, we wouldn't know po sa IBP Zambales what they talked about kasi po uh, usa po ng IBP National at saka ng BFAR po. Um, it's really, it's Attorney Raj and all the other of national officers who would know. Uh, basta ang kaya lang po namin sabihin, uh, nung ibinabap, nung kasama na po namin sila na nagtatrabaho para sa ano, para dito po, for the, for the filing of the petition before the Supreme Court, uh, with their guidance, alam na alam na po nila yung gagawin kasi nakausap na po nila lahat eh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ayan, si na ni Raj po talaga yung magiting na na nagtrabaho po for the filing of this case. Okay. For the filing of the petition before. So nagkaroon po kayo ng mga kababayan na talagang naging interesado. Uh, would you know kung, would you still remember how many fishermen were they? The Um, there was a group of fishermen who came to the office, but uh, we we chose only three of them kasi tatatlo lang naman po yung merong ID at that time. Kaya silang tatlo po yung pumirma, but we understand and we know for a fact that the whole community was behind them. Kasi lahat po sila nagpunta po sa office eh. At saka yung mga nagpunta po sa office, sila po talaga yung very vocal sa nangyayari po, sila yung very, very eager na ma-file na po finally kasi ayaw na nilang naaape. There were other issues, di ba, um, hounding them at the time. Pero ito po, isyong pangkabuhayan po, di ba? Uh, isyong pangkabuhayan po. Kaya they were really very, very eager, very interested. Tapos they... Uh, alam nila yung mga kwento, alam nila yung technicalities, kung, pa, kung ano yung dapat na rights nila. Mga magagaling po, mga matatalino po, yung mga fisher folk na kausap po namin eh. Kabilang po Kailangan po si lang po namin gawin that time was to translate their stories, diba? uh, their accounts, dito po, sa ilagay po namin sa petition kung ano po yung nangyayari sa kanila. Okay. Uh, sila po ba'y kabilang sa mga organisasyon ng mga mangingisda? O sila ba ay may kooperatiba? Ano po yung background nila? Are they subsistence fishermen? Attorney Santos. Attorney alam Santos po, po. Ang alam ko po talaga fisherman sila. Kasi matagal na po sila naninirahan doon sa kinabuksan. Doon na po sila pinanganak at ang mga nininun nila fisherman. As to okay. whether they belong to an organization, wala po kong idea doon kung, naka, kung meron po silang sariling organisasyon. Mm, okay. So, nakarating po sa Court Suprema yung petition? Yes. Opo, ma. nakarating. I-file na i-file yun. Hindi po ba? Okay. And so, then, what happened? Uh, attorney Raja Saklolo. <laughs> Nawala sila eh. Uh, nawala na po. Nawala sila eh. I hope uh, they would uh, return. Uh, nawala yung internet. Baka napukpok ng karpintero. May nag-aayos sa likod nila kanina eh. Pero what happened? As far as you recall. Uh, as far as we can recall po, uh, we wanted them to we wanted them to be with us during the first hearing. Bumabagyo, July, August po, hindi sila nakapunta. So, uh, hinanap namin sila. Pinuntahan. Hindi namin mapasagot. Hindi namin mapasagot. Then, nung pangalawang, pangalawa po, nung, oral, nung second oral argument, akala namin, tahimik lang kami, hinanap. And then, all of a sudden, here's the OSG presenting an affidavit that they were withdrawing from the case as petitioners. Dahil daw po hindi nila naintindihan, hindi nila alam, hindi ipiniliwanag sa kanila. In short, parang ginoyo lang po sila raw. They were, they were making it appear 
na ginoyo lang sila ng IBP Zambales into signing the petition. Yun po yung nangyari. Di wala na po kaming petitioners. Uh -huh. Tapos may lahat kami medyo, di ba, kaliwat ka ng bugbog, lalo na po si Attorney Raj, uh, who was appearing with Attorney Jokno. They were the lead counsel, si Attorney Raj and Attorney Jokno. They were the lead counsels and ayun na nga, um, nabugbog na po sila sa media left and right with threats of disbarment, tapos yung IBP Zambales na hala, nanggoyo kami. Now, which is not really the case because we have pictures to prove that. Na hindi naman po talaga kami nanggoyo because from the very, for, before they signed the petition, pinaliwanag po, binasa lahat. Will you, ano to, will you able to videotape your meetings with the fishermen? Unfortunately, we did not videotape at the time, but we took pictures. But you know, uh, it could have been very different had you taken uh, some videos to prove that they really came and they really had their stories. But Next time, uh, sir, we will do that. Next time, we will do that. Diba? Time, but we, we have that. no inkling Nabigla na lang po nila kaming iiwanan kasi po unang-una nagpunta sila sa IDP office not just once. Sumama po sila. Nagpunta sila sa IDP National, nakipag-usap po sila sa mga national officers and 'di ba nakajaryo pa po kami, nakajaryo pa po eh na ito yung mga fisher folk na merong mga press releases na mga petitioners namin na together with the fisher folk from Palawan, they are filing the they are filing the writ of kadikasan before the Supreme Court. But video, no. Uh -huh. Anyway. Unfortunately uh, for us, yes. Uh, okay lang. Nagkataon na eh. Well, it happened. No? Sabi nga dun sa Bridge of Spice, sabi noong uh, akusado, eh, will it make a difference? <laughs> anyway. Pero ang tanong, what could have made them change their tune? Bakit nagbago? Why 180 degrees, uh, you know, Turn around, if you may. What could have led to it? Um, according to them, po, as I have said earlier, hindi po nila raw naintindihan. Sino kaya ang nagsabi sa kanila na hindi ninyo naintindihan yung inyong ginawa? Who could have convinced them na hindi nila alam yung ginawa nila and they are forgiven? Parang ganun, ano? <laughs> We wouldn't know anymore because they won't talk. Diba? Ang meron na lang po kami, affidavit po na pinresent ni, ni OSG Kalida sa Supreme Court. O ito ang ginawa ng mga fisher folk nyo, ah, hindi naintindihan. Dahil pinapirma nyo sila na hindi nila naintindihan. You took advantage of their kamangmangan. You took advantage of their poverty, blah, blah, blah. Ipadisbar kayo. Really? Diba? Mga walang kwenta kayo, mga nandadaya kayo, kinakalaban niyo yung gobyerno. Yun na lang po ang kaya naming sabihin na sinabi sa amin. Uh -huh. And in fact, diba, um, just to verify, diba, if they were still interested, pinuntahan po namin sila. Diba? Dalawang beses namin silang pinuntahan ulit. Kasi ayaw na nilang magpakita sa amin. Diba? Bumabagyo. Bumabagyo, malalaki yung alon, punta tayo sa sitio kinabuksan. Diba? Mm -hmm. O kwento, ayaw na po namin. Ayaw na po namin kasi gusto na lang po namin ang tahimik na buhay. Ayaw po namin kalabanin ang, ayaw po namin kalabanin ang DNR. Ayaw po namin kalabanin yung gobyerno. Uh, yung, mga, yung mga ganun po. Diba? Kasi before, uh, ang mga finailan po namin ng case, before, PNP, DNR, kasi kaya po sila yung naging respondents po dun sa petition kasi sila yung merong responsibility to protect to protect the environment around the environment to enforce our Philippine environmental laws hindi na lang po na hindi na lang po yung unclos eh. kasi di ba yung unclos yung tri, yung ruling po ng South China Sea Arbitral Tribunal ni recognize po yung tayo yung merong exclusive right di ba exclusive economic right to exploit the natural resources within our special economic zone. Mm -hmm. Therefore, tayo lang ang pwedeng mangisda. Pwede kayong yung mga, hindi lang yung Chinese, yung iba pang gustong mangisda, 
Pwede kayong mangisda sa dagat, but not within our special economic zone. Okay. Di ba medyo ganun na lang po ang sinabi nila sa amin. And anong magagawa namin? Wala na kaming petitioners. Wala na kaming personality. Okay. Natakot na kami. Natakot na, natakot na yung mga petitioners na alaga namin. Na uh-huh. nakakampi namin. Sino pa po ang tatayuan namin? Aha. Uh-huh. So yung palang mga taga barangay ano kinabuksan na pagsarahan no? Na pagsarahan kayo. Yes. Wow. Na pagsarahan po kami. Hindi na bukas. Ayaw na nila bigla sa amin. Ayaw lang buksan. Pero ay buksan. Pero let me just ask you this. Uh, nakita niyo ba nagkaroon ba ng pagbabago sa buhay ng mga mangingisda? Dahil sa baka naman nakatanggap ng biyaya para wag na lamang magpatuloy sa kanilang petisyon. And uh, nagkaroon ba sila ng mga bangka? Nagkaroon ba sila ng magandang kabuhayan? Bagong lambat or anything? Would you know? Sir? Yes, ma'am? Kasi po, may, um, meron po akong, ang mga kasama po namin sa bahay, mga taga San Antonio, Sambales, ano po. Ang sabi po nila, uh, nung mga taga Pundakit, ang laki daw po nang nawala sa kanilang uh, pangingisda. Yung isang barko, yung isang bangka nila na dating puno, halos minsan, one-fourth, one-third na lang, at hindi na po sila parating nakakapangisda. Kasi po yung, um, dun po kasi nakukuha yung magagandang pusit, yung pong mamahaling pusit na puting pusit, marami po sila nakukuha dati. Ngayon po, ang konti na lang po na nakukuha nila eh. So affected na affected na po talaga ang mangingisda. Tapos po, mm-hmm. makikita po natin, kasi po ako, nanay po ako eh, mara- madalas din po ako sa palengke. Makikita po natin sa palengke, dito sa Olonga po, wala na po yung mga masasarap na isda na tulad ng talakitok. Pero po siguro mangilan-ilan, mga dalawa o tatlong piraso. Tapos ang presyo po, napakamahal. Ang makikita na lang po natin dito, mga galunggong, at saka po bangus at saka tilapia. Eh yung pong bangus at tilapia, alam naman po natin, i-raise na lang po yun. Hindi na po sa dagat nakukuha yun. Eh. Ang nakukuha na lang po nakikita namin dito yung galunggong. Eh alam po ninyo, mahal na rin po yung presyo ng galunggong, hindi na rin po siya reachable. And what is worse is that yung pong mga malalaking isda ng China, binibenta na po rin yung naiisda nila doon sa mga fisherman. So napagtutubuan na po yung mga fisherman natin eh. Hindi lang po sila hindi lang po hindi lang po sila nananakawan ng mga isda doon sa pinupuntahan nilang um, economic zone natin. Kinukuha pa nitong mga ito ng itong mga Chinese na to yung ating mga isda. And what is worse pa, isa pa. Ang mga ang mga bangka po nila is 60 meters ang length. Gano'n po kalaki yung 60 meters? Ilang pong tonelada ang kaya nung kalagahin? I-compare po natin sa mga bangka ng ating mga mangingisda. So ang nananakaw po sa atin eh, talagang tonet-tonelada ang isda. Ang laki-laki po na nawawala sa mga fisherman ng Sambales. Yeah. Pero you know? yeah, attorney, Apa? yung pong mga umatras, yung tatlong petitioner, nakita nyo bang nag-improve ang buhay? Baka naman narigaluhan. Sir, hindi ganoon pa rin po ang buhay nila eh. Hindi naman po nagbago ang pamumuhay ng mga yung mga petitioners na nag, nagpupunta no, po sa right? ano, so. yung dating petitioners namin. Meron po akong ugnayan pa rin sa kanila pero ibang kaso naman. Nakikita ko po ganoon pa rin po ang buhay nila eh. Nag-improve lang po dahil merong anak na nag-abroad. Pero yung pong pamumuhay nila economically kung sa pangingisda <laughs> rin lang ang pagkukuhanan. Tingin ko po hindi kasi ganoon pa rin po ang buhay nila eh. Hindi okay. nagbabago po. Okay. Uh, Attorney Hines, given such a condition, a sorry situation, is there a way out? Is there uh, some light at the end of the tunnel unless they make the tunnel longer? Uh, well, uh, <laughs> it's a very challenging question. Palagay ko po sa nabanggit na po kanina ni President Bert Strada that the incoming uh, Board of Governors and uh, with him as our national president, we'll find new ways of uh, making this issue uh, a matter of uh, national importance. Nag-usap po kami uh, when we were able to meet in the IBP Central Luzon uh, Convention last June 25. And uh, meron pong binabalak ang ating national president. I will not preempt him. But rest assured that the IBP uh, will do uh, more concrete actions 
in order that this decision will uh, uh, not only be, uh, as the president said, a mere scratch, useless piece of paper, but really a force, uh, a, a reality that uh, we can uh, enforce and implement within our shores. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, by the way, you, you use the term useless. No? Uh, is it the decision or the person who said it? <laughs> I want to uh, <laughs> invoke my right to something incriminating. <laughs> Although it is my fellow Bedan. Yeah, yeah. And, oh, you uh, come from the royal school, no? That's okay. Uh, we anyway. already called this uh, attention by coming out with a fraternal statement of concern, calling him, uh, asking him to retract his statements, which are prejudicial uh, to the nation insofar as uh, West Philippine Sea issue is concerned. And also, the IBP Sambales came out with a statement of concern and so far as President uh, Duterte's remarks are concerned. Mm -hmm. Okay, but did you get any reaction? Ang nakita po namin reaction was through uh, pres uh, was through uh, speak uh, spokesperson Secretary Roque in which he said na yung mga sinasabi ng Presidente ay uh, mali but in his clarification he muddled again the issue because number one, yung useless piece of paper daw po, ang sabi ng presidente, is that it cannot be enforced because there's no police power of the permanent arbitral tribunal. Then yung uh, statement po daw niya that uh, China is in full possession of the West Philippine Sea, he was referring only to the Panatag Shoal, which is only a speck in the dust insofar as uh, West Philippine Sea is concerned. But Nag-mute po kayo. Paki-unmute lang, Attorney Winston. Biglang napindot yung mute. Paki-unmute lang. All there right. was an acknowledgement po from uh, ah. Secretary Roque that some of the statements of the President were wrong. Ah, okay. Uh, can we really not enforce it? Can we not uh, make use of it? Uh, is it proper for us to go to the United Nations? Sir? and ask for something para ma-implement yung arbitral tribunal ruling? Do we have to go to the United Nations? Uh, well, sa akin po yan, uh, of course, uh, that's uh, a decision that the government has to take. No, we as individual lawyers for IBP, uh, that's beyond our salary pay grade, kumbaga. But uh, <laughs> we as citizens believe, ako, as a citizen of the Philippines, believe that our country should take all possible means. Uh, not, not uh, as the president would always say, na gigirahin natin sila. Because we cannot do that. Uh, we are prohibited uh, by our constitution uh, to, to make war with other countries. So, But there are many other... Uh, non-military action that we could take in order to enforce and have this arbitral tribunal record. Uh, okay, very good. Attorney Deo, your thoughts, please. Attorney Deo? Uy, nawala si Deo sa camera. Nawala pa yung sound. Balikan natin si Deo. Uh, Attorney Santos? Yes, sir. Can, can we enforce it? Sabi kasi ng Presidente, hindi natin kaya, hindi natin gigirahin yung China. Can we enforce? Yes. <laughs> we as individual, mahirap po sa atin eh. Siguro po, dapat ang gobyerno, dapat talaga pong enforce nila ang tribunal ruling. Kasi mm -hmm. po, it is our right as a nation na magkaroon ng, ng ma-protection ma na ng ating economic zone. Alang-alang po yan sa ating Pilipino eh. Alam po ninyo, mabuti nga po, naalala ko po yung the late President Aquino Siya po ang nagpangalan doon sa South China Sea sa administrative or by virtue of administrative order number 29 sinabi niya na yung South China Sea ay magiging tatawagin na natin siyang West Philippine Sea. Nagkaroon po siya ng subliminal effect sa atin eh. Para pong nagkaroon po ng ano po ba yun? Yung sense of patriotism at the same time nandoon po yung um, feeling na kailangan talaga nating i-protect at i-preserve ang ating ang ating dagat. Yung po. 
sa pamagi, pamamagitan po ng ta- pagtawag ditong West Philippine Sea, nandun na po yung ano natin, nandun na po yung pagiging patriotic natin at saka pagiging nationalistic natin. Nadidevelop na po yun sa atin eh. Subliminally, it affect us already eh. Meron na pong, ma- meron na pong effect sa ating mga kapwa Pilipino yun. Kahit yung pong West Philippine Sea eh, sa atin-atin lamang. Kasi po sa ibang bayan, South China Sea pa rin ang refer- nagre-refer pa rin sila dito as South China Sea. Pero tayo, mga Pilipino, tinatawag na po natin siyang West Philippine Sea. Okay. Yes, uh, Atty. Deo, nawala ka. Deo? Deo, yung signal. Paki, ano lang no, paki-unmute. Uh, Melo, uh, uh, President yeah. Bert Strada is in the waiting room. Uh, I haven't seen him yet. Uh, let me see. Ah, yeah. He is already with us. Yeah, okay. Good, good, good. Uh, okay. Uh, Attorney Deo, your thoughts, please? Can we not enforce it as a country or as individuals? Can we not petition the government to act for an honor on our behalf? Deo? Yun. Nakamute. Paki-unmute. Yeah, yeah, okay, good. Yeah, I can Yeah, good. Yeah. All age, lapsus memoria. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Anyway, so you're saying. Anyway, uh, I'm not afraid of red tagging or what. Uh, but the thing here is, uh, uh, yung kanina, that's why I mentioned na uh, under the Constitution, the Philippines, Section 2, Article 2, we recognize uh, international law as part of the law of our land, right? E nung dinisay dyan, dapat itong gobyerno natin yun, the President Duterte, e miski na papano, una-una, dineklara yung, yung recognition of the decision. Pero iba ho yung enforcement eh. Pero to, to, to go further na, that we cannot enforce it, maybe unless we go to war. That's not our policy under the Constitution. Number two, kung i-enforce natin, eh, we cannot do it alone. We must go to the origin na nag-decide. United Nations, the, the PCA. Most probably, they refer it to the United Nations to, or to the UNCLOS Commission to decide on what to do. Pero ho tayo, since member tayo ng members of nations, di naman ho natin pwedeng gawin yan through show of arms. We are different from the big ones like the United States, like Canada, Great Britain, who are passing through West, West Philippine Sea. Isa lang naman ho yun, kaya hindi sila mahinto ng mga Chinese. Eh. Pagdaan nila sa West Philippine Sea, hindi matigil. Kasi ho, meron silang right of innocent passage under international law. E yan ho, ang right of innocent passage, they can pass through our 200 kilometer, uh, miles radius ng, ng ating uh, EEC, Exclusive Economic Zone, unless they will utilize harvest our resources which the Chinese Chinese are doing bawal ho yon but these guys are just passing through right of innocent passage hindi nila mapigilan yun ho yung ano yun na ho yung diferensya either we have our coalition with the allies to protect us or we have the united nations to act ang hirap po sa united nations eh pagka ho yan nag-act for example they will enforce it through through forceful means for example ano ho through embargo, etc. Eh, dapat ito, eh, tatawag ka pa siguro ng Security Council to agree doon sa mga member nations. Na hindi naman mong As for the Philippines, hindi ko ho alam. Pero, if it will be taken in coalition with Vietnam, Malaysia, Brunei, Indonesia, mas malakas ho yung persa natin eh. But, personally, hindi ko ho nakita yung pagpupulong nitong Southeast Asian nation natin. Kasi mm-hmm. parang hindi naman ho sinasabi ng ating gobyerno ngayon yan eh. That's 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 what we mean. Uh, ano ba klaseng attitude yan? Uh, tayo okay. ba may ab- abdecratic attitude to 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 protect and to preserve our country? One final word, uh, Melo, but I hope this is not doomsday, ha? In this pandemic, kami hong matatanda, nanonood na lang kami ng YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Ako, okay. Mahilig, mahilig, mahilig ako na aksyon, eh. Yung bang hindi ba sa YouTube, eh, Tony Santos, yung mga World War II saints, yung, yung, yung World War II na gera, how it started, how the, the Allies went through Normandy, etc. And how the Germans started it all. Alam nyo, isa ho ang aking, aking uh, I'm just worried, but maybe not immediate, 
yung ginawa ho ng Germany sa Poland. Alam niyo ho ba ginawa ng Germany sa Poland? Kayo na ho mag-compare, uh, okay. no? Nakikipag-usap po ang France at ang United Kingdom sa kanila na huwag nilang lusubin ang Poland. Kasi yun, uma- umaabante na mga mga tanke sa mga military arm ng Germany. Nakikipag-usap din ang German. Like what the Japanese did to us. Nakikipag-usap sa Amerika. Nakikipag-usap yung mga representative nila na hindi namin natake yung recession, etc. But in the meantime, nandun na sila sa boundary ng Poland. And in due time, they Blitzkrieg. entered Poland. Blitzkrieg. Oh. Okay. Tingnan nyo. Tingnan ho yung that's what worries me about uh, uh, Masinlok, Baho de Masinlok and the, that, the Scarborough Shoal. That's less than 30 minutes flight from their bases there to our Sambalis area. Kaya okay. ba ako nang tatamaan sa Sambalis eh? Okay. Yan lang ako yeah. ang problema. Hello? Yeah. Uh, yes? Hello? Our uh, IBP National President Egon Cayosa is uh, can also join us. Uh, Bert uh, Tornis. Yeah, uh, he, uh, He's now here. Okay. Sir. President Cayosa, good morning and welcome to the discussions. Uh, ano po ang inyong iiwan ng alaala sa IBP? Your term will end at 12 midnight tonight. Ano po yung legacy ng iiwanan ninyo? Paki-unmute lang po. Teka, yan. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Good morning everyone and Good thank morning. you for the great opportunity. And um yung hong uh, alaala na maiwanan natin encapsulated dun sa sampung resolusyon na hinahain dun sa General Assembly nung National Convention. About 4,000 lawyers uh, registered <coughs> nandun ho yan. At yung mga in na National uh, General Assembly resolution, sampu ho yan, dinaan natin sa scientific polling dun sa Zoom. At ako ho'y nagagalak na mag-submit uh, sa inyo ang resulta ho pinakamataas 99%, pinakamababa 97% ang approval ng ating kapwa Pilipinong abogado dun sa mga resolusyon. Kasama ko dyan yung paninindigan ng IBP laban sa EJK and uh, yung suporta sa rule of law. Yun ho nga uh, paninindigan ng IBP tungkol sa West Philippine Sea upang ipaglaban dapat ng gobyerno natin at gamitin ang lahat ng lakas at resources para ipaglaban yung pinanga, pinanganulan natin at iba pa. Mm-hmm. Nabanggit ko yung West Philippine Sea sapagkat ang ating mga kaibigang abogado at opisyal dyan sa Sambales chapter ang lakas ho ng kanilang tulong para nabuo yung kaso noon. At nung nagkaroon ho ng mga issue, hindi ho nila binitawan at saludo ho sila uh, kami sa kanila. Kasi yung mga inisyatibo ng IBP National eh ang buhay ho niyan nasa chapter. Kaya nagpapasalamat kami sa IDP Sambales chapter sapagkat uh, sila ho yung aming katuwang para mabuo yung uh, kasong inihain natin sa Supreme Court. Opo. Yeah, nagkataon nga lamang sila yung inilaglag ng mga petitioner ano. Tama po yan. Uh, lessons learned yan, no? At uh, din ho yung AJK ho naman, yung rule of law, uh, yung respect for human rights. Eh yung bakong literato ho naman, uh, kaya President uh, Hines, kagad ho, kung maalala niyo nung Mayo 1, nung naaresto yung mga UP students at nagpasaklolo ang presidente ng UP, eh within hours ho, tumalima nung naalerto ang IBP Sambalis chapter kasi nangyari sa inyong jurisdiction, kagad ho ay uh, natulungan sila ng free legal aid program natin at hindi ho sila binitawan hanggat hindi sila nakalaya, nakapagpiyansa. So ganyan ho yung pagtutulungan and dynamism na nakikita natin sa ating mga chapters. So salamat ho. Yan ho, hindi ko lang uh, legacy, kundi continuing tradition ng IBP at ang aming mga local leaders. Opo. Pero maiba po ako. Matanong ko kayo. Eh, si Fatou Ben Zauda nagsalita bago siya natapos sa kanyang term as prosecutor sa ICC na kailangang isama na yung iba pang mga usapin at sana ay iba pang uh, data yung naganap noong kabilang ang Pilipinas sa ICC at uh, simula na yung pagsisiyasat. What are your thoughts about this? Well, tayo ho ay natutuwa sapagkat yung ICC ho naman kahit uh, 
yan ay supplementary lang sa ating local system. Eh, nakakasiguro tayo na kung pumalya ang uh, ating mahina ang ating enforcement and respect for human rights dito o humanitarian uh, uh, law sa ating jurisdiction. Wow, may solo kang picture? Merong susuporta. So it is an, a mechanism for accountability regardless of the personality. So we are happy that um, tumutuloy yung proseso. Anyway, everybody will be given his day in court. I hope ba? But what is important is that there are existing mechanisms for accountability. At yung mga naagrabyado, yung mga naapi, meron at meron pa rin silang papupuntahan para sa any remedy that may be available to them. Yeah, pero yung statement po ng Pangulo na hindi ako magpapasakop dyan dahil mga puti yan. How does it sound to you? Coming from a lawyer himself, what are your thoughts about it? Well, it It sounds uh, a very personal point of view, uh, but uh, we should not mistake uh, an issue of sovereignty here. Sa pagkat ang nahabla naman hindi ho naman ang sovereign Philippine Republic o ang sovereign Filipino people hindi ho naman hinahabla yung gobyerno dito. Eh. Ang nakahabla ho dito at magandang ipaniwanag natin sa ating mga babayan individual. Individual. Hindi ho yung sabayan ng Pilipino. So we cannot claim sovereign immunity. Di ho ba? It is individual people. So kagaya din ho ng ating criminal justice system, bawat isa mananagot to what extent they participated. Hindi ho naman ito pangkalahatan na indictment of the Filipino people. So to our mind, naintindi natin yung kanilang personal point of view, But uh, if you may ask me, uh, it would be much better if everyone cooperated. Because anyway, the ICC, the Rome Statute, is an accountability mechanism. It was designed to safeguard universal human rights. Na yung pagkilala ng buong mundo na yung human rights is not only national, kundi universal. By which of us become a being, human beings and in a civilized world, In a civilized global community, we all agree that we have to respect this. And if we fall short of the expectations and the requirements of law, or even violate these uh, sacred rights, eh, may pananagutan tayo. So ito ho yung mensahe na sana all of us uh, could cooperate. Regardless of the guilt or the evidence, it is really the principle that all of us should uphold as lawyers and more importantly, as leaders of our respective countries or respective organizations. But they say that the Philippines is no longer part of the Rome Statute. We already left March 19 last year. Well, yun nga ho eh, paulit-ulit na sinasabi niyan, pero hindi ho may erase ang malinaw na provision ng Rome Statute that uh, even if you withdraw from the Rome Statute, jurisdiction attaches up to the time that you withdrew, effectively withdrew from the statute. So yung mga naganap na, yung hindi na nagawa, from the start we signed in and ratified the statute, up to the time we are officially out uh, from it, sakop ho nila yan. Hindi ho uh, mai-erase yan. At mautak ho naman ang mga bansang gumawa nito. Sapagkat kung the rule were otherwise, useless yung uh, treaty na ito. Kasi anyone who will be nasasakdal, eh siyempre aalis. But malinaw ko yung provision. At any, anyone is uh, clear about that. Uh, there is no doubt na may jurisdiction. Pero at kita ko naman natin yung submission ng, ng prosecutor, it is only up to March 2019. Sapagkat after that, wala na silang jurisdiction. Pero hindi mm -hmm. lang po yung current administration, uh, inatras ho nila hanggang 2011 sapagkat mm -hmm. may nakikita na. So lahat ho ng sangkot doon, individual officials or anybody else, they will be charged and will be tried as individual persons. Ah, walang Never, dyan do, ha? <laughs> wala ho, kinakailangan ho na. Meron din siguro in, in the in the investigation uh, uh, phase, but eventually everyone has to be charged.
let me ask you one last question. I know you still have a meeting, but my question for you is this. What would you advise young Filipinos thinking of becoming lawyers like you? Is it a noble profession? Is it something one can be proud of? Is it something risky considering that lawyers, prosecutors, and judges are killed? I start with the first. Uh, uh, and this is an advice uh, we share with lawyers and they know this and the, those who wish to be lawyers, you cannot be a lawyer anywhere in the world if you don't have courage. Courage, moral courage is very important for lawyers. It is an essential character of a lawyer. Kung hindi ko nyo kayang manindigan, wag na kayong mag-abogado. Pangalawa, is it a noble profession? It is a noble profession. It has always been a noble profession. But as I said, dun mo sa National Convention namin, the Filipino lawyer, the Filipino law student, kami ho, namumuno at saka yung ordinary member, it should be our personal uh, commitment to be good and honorable Filipino lawyers to make the profession honorable. Kasi ho, unfortunately, nakikita natin, meron din ho mga nagkakamali, nagkukulang, mga tiwali. But the IDP is always ready to hear all sides and hold accountable our peers. Kung titignan ho ninyo, kaya most honorable kami kasi kami lang ho yung profession sa ating bansa na talagang sinisuryoso yung discipline. At kami ho, pinakamahirap na trabaho ng mga namumuno sa IBP, yun hong investigahan at parusahan kung kinakailangan yung mga nagkakamali at yung mga nagkakasala. Sa ibang profesyon ho, medyo hindi nila masyadong pinapansin yan. Isa rin ho yan na matingkad at matatag na tradisyon ng IBP. So we believe it remains to be an honorable profession but it is upon every individual law student or lawyer in this country to prove that it is. We are only as good as our membership. Very good. Thank you very much. I wish you the best of health, uh, attorney, and uh, hope to hear from you again in one of our discussions, even as immediate past president of IBP. We need your wisdom. Pero yung mga napapatay na lawyers, ano ang tingin ninyo rito? Deliberate ba ito? Ano kaya? Well, uh, napakarami na ho yan. No? Iba't ibang klase, iba't ibang uh, motivation. Meron hong iba na ang matingkad na suspetyo, uh, gobyerno. May about four or five. Now, ang maganda ho, uh, ay meron na hong lawyer security and justice program in place. Nakakausap ho ng presidente ng IBP, yung mga chapters, yung mga pamilya, at yung mga namumuno ng mga security investigation and law enforcement agencies, AFP, NBI, PNP. At sa mga nakaraang mga kaso ho, naging effective yan. Kasi kung papansin ninyo, the last four cases of lawyer slinging, dahil nga in place na yan, nag-uusap kami, we exchange information, the chapters are there, may mga task force, nakakausap ang pamilya, within two months ho, natuntun, nalaman kung sino mga suspect na aresto at nakasuhan. Sa aming paningin, importante ho mangyari ito. No amount of sloganeering, no amount of public statements and condemnation will deter the criminals from hitting lawyers kung may impunity. At kami ho naman, uh, hindi ho dahil abogado, mas importante ang kanyang kaluluwa o buhay sa ordinaryong mamamayang Pilipino. The reason why we call this out and we're very resolute is because the image the belief of our countrymen in the justice system is greatly eroded kung yung pwes, yung fiscal, yung abogado, yung namamahala ng criminal justice system, e pinapatay at walang nangyayari, there is immunity. Sino ho ang maniniwala sa justice system? That's the main reason why IBP will always speak out against lawyer killing and demand swift justice. Not because the lawyer's soul is more important, special, but because we have to preserve and restore the belief and faith of our countrymen in our justice system. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Maraming salamat. Thank you, Sir uh, Thank President. You. Thank you. Galing, galing. Galing. Oh, salamat.
Apo. Salamat po. Thank you. Uh, with your permission, I, I have yes. to leave. I will yes. join you. I'm just a text away. We will support the new administration and will continue to serve the interests of IPP in whatever way we can. Salamat, Salamat po. po. Salamat. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Closing statements tayo from our lawyers from Zambales and hopefully makasama rin natin si Attorney Bert uh, Strada before we close. Let's start with uh, Attorney Santos. What are your thoughts? What are your messages to our listeners, to our viewers, to fishermen who may be similarly situated? Yes, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much. Paki-unmute lang po, ma'am. Paki-unmute lang. Yes, okay. Yes, please. Nakamute na 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 pa rin po. <laughs> All right. Yes. Okay, nakamute pa rin. Anyway, sandali lang po, Atty. Santos. Andito na si Presidente. Si Presidente uh, Estrada. Bert, yung message mo, what can the general public expect from the IBP effective 12.01 this morning, tomorrow morning? Anong gagawin ninyo? Anong priority ninyo? Uh, yes, sir. Um, the public can expect its IBP to continue to be the sentinel of the rule of law and democracy. And ito nga ako, sir, before I even sit down, you can see that the transition between the uh, previous board and ours has put this issue of the West Philippine Sea at the topmost priority. And even before we sit down, we are already discussing what more we can do. And uh, one of the last uh, acts uh, of our outgoing president is still this issue and very we have been very fortunate that uh, we catched him <laughs> he was just taking his uh, things uh, from his office uh, to make way for me to to occupy it but uh, we thank him for his gracious time uh, he was supposed to to leave earlier but uh, as you can see sir we, the public can expect the IBP the national office and our chapters who will be working together and protect this uh, our sovereignty and our sovereign rights in this uh, mm -hmm. issue. That's what we can say, sir. Thank okay. Thank you very much. I wish you the best of luck. I, I wouldn't take much of your time, and hopefully we will have more of these discussions. Thank yes, you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay, you sir. Uh, Attorney Maria Soledad, please. Attorney, yes. yes, please. Nawala na po kayo sa camera. Oh, nga po, hindi ko na makita. <laughs> <laughs> Parang pareho tayo ito. Wala eh. Okay. Try lang natin. Sige po. Yung mensahe po ninyo sa ating mga kababayan at sa ating mga manonood. Your message please. Nawala siya. Yes ma'am. Okay po. Sige po. Yung message po ninyo. Uy. One. Going once. Twice, thrice, Attorney Josefina Bueno, please. Ano po mensahe ninyo sa ating panayam ngayong umaga? Mawala yung mga signal nila. Deo, ikaw muna kaya. I can hear you for yes. the first time. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Message? Siguro, yeah. Siguro, eh, si Antonio, ano, Hines. Oh, mamaya, ah, mamaya. Mamaya, mamaya. Yeah, yeah. mamaya. Yeah, yung ating ah. panghuli. He okay. will be last, our president. Yeah, right. Ang, ang tingin ko nga, eh, itong WPS issue, uh, issues goes, it, it go more than that. Kasi, it, it, it affects us in our livelihood, our resources, and, all. and it's being taken without even uh, blatantly right in front of our eyes. And nothing is being done. At number two, ho, as I said kanina, Ang wari ko ho yung security. Uh, pakatapos, uh, finally, maganda yung sinabi ni IBP President Atty. Cayosa dahil dapat maniniwala ang tao sa justice system natin, ilang beses na po talaga ginawa ng ilang government sa atin na improve ang justice system. Uh, ayaw pa din. Uh, siguro tama yung sinabi ni Bishop Socrates eh. Doon sa, sa eulogy niya kay Pinoy. What we did now are just two simple character of a person. 
Number one ho, dapat meron tayong decency. Saka number two ho, meron no tayong integrity. Meron po siguro dapat number three eh, which I guess everyone knows it. Number three would be, meron naman siguro tayong competency. Hindi ko ano ano ginagawa natin eh, hindi naman sang ayon sa mga rules and regulations, eh magmumukha ho tayo na talagang hindi tayo asahan. So yan lang ho yung ano yung, yung dapat sigurong isipin ng tao para maniwala naman ang ang mga tao sa atin even as lawyers. Yun lang po. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Salamat. Thank you day, oh. uh, Attorney Santos, please. Yes sir, sir. Alam po niyo pag nagbibiyahe ako papuntang Burgos, Pangasinan, nadadaanan ko po yung dagat. Minsan natatanong ko po yung mga Chinese vessels, natatanong ko rin po yung mga <laughs> Um, siguro mga lupa na nakikita ko na hinahakot from Candelaria tapos dinadala po sa isang lugar doon sa sa Alaminos tinatambak po doon at may mga vessel din po doon na malapit mukhang ikakagat po doon yung mga yung mga lupa ano at alam ko dadalhin doon sa West Philippine Sea or somewhere there na para i-reclaim alam po niyo ninyo nalulungkot ako kasi po wala pong ginagawa ang ating local government unit eh Sana po may mga ginagawa sila kasi itong mga bagka na ito, they are within the economic zone. I think they also have jurisdiction over this eh, di po ba? Kasi um, hindi lang naman po, hindi lang naman po dapat doon sa boundary nila yon Dahil dagat pa rin po ng ano nila yun eh, jurisdiction din pa po ng local government nila yun eh. Sana po meron din po silang gagawin para po proteksyonan ang bayan nila, proteksyonan nila ang dagat nila, proteksyonan nila ang ilog nila. Kasi nakikita ko po talaga na nakikita po natin talaga yung pagwasak at pagsira ng dagat. Yung pong pagpa-black sand lang po nasisira na po yung ating mga dagat doon eh. Na nag-erode na po ang ating mga dagat. Sana po binibigyan din po ng tuon at ng pansin ng local government government unit ang mga nagyayari pong ito. Hindi lang po dapat sa puso natin, hindi lang po dapat yung mga mangingisda ang nag uh, ano dito ang nag-iisip eh. Dapat po binibigyan po ng tuon ng mga local government at ng ibang mga at ng mga ibang ahensya ng gobyerno. Hindi lang po kami. Kasi po, kung nagmamalasakit po talaga ang local government, dapat po, dapat po meron silang sina, ipinapass o na resolusyon kung anong gagawin nila dapat sa mga barkong ito. Wala pong nangyayari eh. Siguro po may takot sila. Kaparehas din po natin, kung mag-mention tayo ng names, siguro baka maretag pa tayo, di po ba? So siguro mas maganda po. Mm-hmm. Mas, mag, mas maganda po, sir, kung halimbawa sa mga local government unit na to, eh, makikipag-coordinate din po sa mga mamamayan, sa mga mangingista, para po malaman o marinig ang mga hinain ng mga taong ito at para maiparating po sa mas nakakataas pang, uh, sa halimbawa, makarating pa po sa mas mataas na pamahalaan. Okay. Ganun po, sir. Maraming salamat. Nabanggit din nga yan nung kaibigan kong si June Ledesma ng Davao. Siguro daw eh, may masasabi rin yung mga abogado ng Zambales. Doon sa pagpatag ng bundok dyan na dinadala yung lupa patungo sa South China Sea. Eh, hindi ko alam kung ano, mabuti binanggit ninyo. Pero rampant pala ha. May malaking bagay yan. Tingnan natin kung ano magaganap. Thank you, Attorney Maria Soledad Santos. Salamat po. Attorney Josefina Bueno, your thoughts please. Hello? Bawala yata si Madam. Baka may kausap ng mangingisda. <laughs> Atay ni Hines, thank you very much. Your thoughts, please. Well, unang-una, maraming salamat, uh, Melo, for this uh, opportunity na binigay mo sa aming mga kasamahan ko from uh, IBP Sambales at na napakaganda rin ang pagkakataon na nakapanayam natin ang aming mga pangulo sa aming IBP uh, National. Ang may papangako po namin uh, ay uh, taus-puso at talagang malaki ang aming ibibigay na suporta sa anumang inisyatiba ng ating uh, magiging Pangulo ng IBP tungkol sa usapin ng West Philippine Sea. At uh, kami po ay uh, nakahanda na uh, sumunod at magbigay ng uh, legal expertise and our services para po magkaroon ng uh, concrete action tulad ng ginawa noon 
uh, ng ating mga naunang mga officers. Uh, sa akin personal naman po na, na pamamayag, ako ay very close to heart din naman po ang uh, usapin tungkol sa pangingisda sa West Philippine Sea dahil pinanganak ako at lumaki sa Santa Cruz, Sambales, na talagang nag enjoy po kami sa kasaganaan ng ating uh, uh, karagatan. Pero nitong mga nakaraang taon ay nagkaroon na ng limitasyon ng ating mga mingisda sa kanilang pagpunta doon sa Panatag or Scarborough Shoal. Sana po ay maibalik muli uh, sa pamamagitan ng ating pagsama-samang aksyon at konkretong uh, mga gagawin sa mga susunod po na buwan at araw at mga taon. Maraming pong salamat. Well, Kaibigan, it's a pleasure to have our guests today. May mga unexpected guests tayo na nakasama, but we're happy nonetheless because they added color and substance to the discussion. We had a recap of the IBP na magtatapos ngayong gabi under the leadership of its outgoing president and an insight ano magaganap sa susunod na taon under a new president. You know, lawyers ang mga bisita natin pero uh, there's a saying, Dura Lex said Lex. But there are people who say something else. Like Dura Lex said Lex, kung matapang ang batas, mas matapang ako. Kaya iba, usapan yun. <laughs> <laughs> We are slowly becoming a government of men and no longer of laws. Prove me wrong, we are a government of laws. Thank you very much. Magandang umaga raw kay Attorney Winston Hines, sabi ni Dennis Gorecho at ni Alden Monzon ng Kyodo News Agency. Thank you very much to all our panelists. God bless you. Stay healthy. Keep us posted. Until next time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Salamat. 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 Sal